What's going on guys? My name is Caleb Trackengast. This is Buffalo Creek Outdoors. I'm back up here at Grafton Archery and Outdoors. This place has been newly renovated and looks awesome. Today's video, I wanna talk about what I look at when I'm selecting a hunting bow and kind of the criteria that I've developed and my new grading system, my new new grading system for 2024. Come along with me, let's get into the video. All right, so when I started reviewing the 2023-2023 lineup of bows from all the major manufacturers that we carry here at the shop, I had a grading criteria that I had kind of edited from last year's criteria. I'll put that on the screen now. And if you've watched any of my videos as of recently, uh, you'll know already what my grading criteria is. I started thinking about some things and how even though I try to be unbiased, the way I had that system kind of set up, there was a lot of mostly opinion in that video. What I want to do moving forward and with this new gra uh, grading criteria, I hope you like this. What I want to do moving forward is I want my video to be mainly based on the scoring system. And then at the end of the video, I'll give you my opinion of the bow, what I think about the bow, if I would shoot the bow or maybe who this bow might kind of lend itself to or who ate the, this particular bow might lend itself to. Uh, the way this new gra grading criteria is going to work, I'll just name off what I have listed here. It's quite a bit different than it was before. It's still going to be a 100 point grading system. I think the 100 point grading system, if we are going to grade bows, I think that 100 point system is nice because these bows are so close together that I'll just even be, I'll be honest with you, right now, based on the bows that I've reviewed, there's only a nine point difference between the bow that I think is the best or scores the best, maybe not what I think is the best, but what scores the best, and the bow that scored the least. Uh, but that's with a 100 point system and that, that, the way this system's gonna work is I really think it will give you a good overview of the entire bow platform. So let's go ahead and talk about what I've got set up in this new scoring system. First and foremost is gonna be shootability. We're buying a bow mainly to be accurate with that bow, whether that be target, hunting, whatever it may be. The way I've got this broken down and I'll go ahead and put it on the screen so you can see it as well. For shootability, it's gonna be a 10 point grade or from zero to 10 points. Uh, what this is gonna be is I tried to come up with a way to measure the, measure the bows, dimensions, all kinds of stuff, put it together into one score or one total number. And then based on that, we'll give a score for a bow. So let's just take this bow in particular. I'm not going to tell you the name. Axle to axle length this is what I'm going to have. This is how I'm going to have it split up. I'm going to have axle to axle length, riser length. When I say riser length, from the pivot point on the limb to the pivot point to the other limb, that riser length. I'm going to have your brace height. Those are going to be our three positive measurements. Reflex is going to be our fourth option. And reflex is going to be subtracted from that number. So with this bow, I got 30 and 3 eighths for the axle to axle, 27 and an eighth for the riser length, the total riser length, six and 3 sixteenths for the brace height. That number is added together. And then for the reflex, this bow had a two and a quarter inch reflex. I'm gonna do a video sometime later, either this week or next week, talking about how you get your reflex because I honestly screwed up on the Bowtech videos when I talked about the reflex of the bow. I did not measure it and I went off of just basic what it looked like and I was way wrong. So I'll admit that I was wrong, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to measure that as accurately as I know how to. Um, but anyway, that, that number will total out. So this number totaled out at 61.437. 
According to our grading criteria, 72 inches total and above is gonna be a 10 point and then it's gonna work its way down from there. Like I said, it'll be on the screen. This particular bow scored a six. The thing I like about this is it shows, it gives a range for each number and these bows are so similar that it kind of shows you how it's, these numbers are so close. A lot of these bows are gonna score roughly the same based on if it's a 30 inch bow, a 33 inch bow, a 34 inch bow, whatever it may be. But it'll kind of just give you an idea of, hey, this, this bow is probably gonna be middle of, the line, middle of the line, maybe a little more accurate, maybe extremely accurate. Your next number is gonna be tunability. Tunability is a big one, guys, and a lot of these new bows have many of the same features. Some have some features that are individual to them, um, but tunability is also gonna be a 10-point grading scale. The way I've got this set up, the things that I'm looking for in tunability are gonna be, can you adjust the cam left and right with or without a press or not at all? So those are gonna be you get two points if you can do it without a press, one point if you can do it with a press, zero points if that's not an adjustment that's an, op that's an option on the bow. 18 points is 10 points. 18 points scored on this chart is gonna be a 10 point score and then it's gonna work its way down from there. Cam left and right, with a press, without a press, not at all. Then same for limb pocket, can you adjust or tighten or lock down the limb pocket with a press? or with, without or with or no, not at all. Draw length adjustment. Most of these bows are gonna come adjustable with a mod or some form of mod, however it is on each brand. What I've got here is with, instead of being without a press or with a press, I've got it, can you adjust the draw length in quarter inch increments or half inch increments or not at all? So quarter inch increments is gonna give you a two, half inch increments is gonna give you a one. Grip, can you adjust the grip? If you cannot adjust the grip, is there a good option for aftermarket grips or is the grip that comes on the bow pretty good? So if you have an adjustable grip, you get a two. If you have decent options on the aftermarket side or if your grip is pretty good coming from the factory, you're gonna get a one. Most, not many bows are gonna get a zero, if any. Uh, let off. Can you adjust your let off on the bow or uh, do you have an option to adjust your let off at all? Uh, so for if you can adjust your let off on the bow with the, with the mod that's on the bow, then you're gonna get a two. If not, you get a one uh, or a zero because there's a couple bows that have don't have an option, don't have a separate mod, don't have an option to adjust your let off. So, uh, timing, can you adjust your timing without a press or do you have to adjust your timing by twisting your cables with a press? Without a press gives you a two, with a press gives you a one. There's not many bows out there, if any, that you can't adjust your timing by just sticking it in the press and twisting your cables. Um, string and cables, I've got this listed on the chart. What that means, can you take the, the string and cables off the bow without a press? with a press. They're all gonna at least have the option to take your strings and cables off with a press. There's only one brand right now that has an option to take your strings and cables off without a press of some sort. Two points if you can do it without a press, one point if you can do it with a press. Another, the next two things that I have here are gonna kind of go, kind of go together. Integrated rest and integrated sight. They're gonna be separate scores, but where I'm going with that is, do you have the option for an integrated sight and integrated rest? Where I think that plays a big part in the tunability is because if that bow has that option, more than likely it's gonna allow you to get away from having to run as much, much weight on a sidebar or back bar. You can kind of tune your bow based on your accessories and that's how all these bows are kind of lending themselves to going around their accessory system. So two points if it does op if you do have an option for an integrated sight, and also two points if you have an option for an integrated wrist. If you don't have an option for integrated, it's either two or it's a zero. There's not a one. You either have the option or you don't have the option. 
And then over the side of the chart, you'll see the grading score. And then each one of these blocks are gonna have a total where you can write down your totals. Once I get this Excel spreadsheet finalized 100%, I'm gonna try to figure out how to put this in the description or at least link it to the video and maybe have it on my website where you can go to it and use it yourself, go on the sheet and uh, score these bows yourself. The next criteria is gonna be draw cycle. Draw cycle is huge on a hunting bow. Draw cycle is also gonna be a 10 point scale. I don't really have a hard uh, way to measure the smoothness or the drop off or any of that stuff. That's gonna be pretty opinionated. It's kind of hard to get away from 100% opinion or even getting away from partial opinion. But the draw cycles, it's gonna to have to be opinionated. I have no way to scale that. So number four, we got letdown. What I mean by let down is when I let that bow down, can I let it down smoothly? Does it want to sh snatch my shoulder off? What is it? So that's also going to be a 10 point scale. I think that a let a bow that has a lot of let, like a, a good smooth let down is great in the hunting aspect. Maybe not so much for target, but in the hunting aspect, being able to let your bow down when something is going on, when something changes is huge. So that's also gonna be a 10 point scale, like I said, and I think that is a very critical thing to show the difference in the draw cycle. Some bows are gonna have a great draw cycle, horrible letdown, and so forth, whatever it may be, or vice versa. But letdown is number four. Number five is gonna be back wall. These, bow, these bows this year have been closer than ever, in my opinion, on how well, how stiff the back wall or solid the back wall is. Some of the bows are adjustable in their back wall and others are not. Um, that's also gonna be a 10 point scale. Noise and vibration. Noise and vibration was originally one thing on my other grading criteria. I've now got it split in six, six is noise, seven is vibration. Both of these are gonna be a five point scale. The reason why I went down to a five point scale on these is one, because I split them up and two, because I don't think they're quite as important as what most people make them out to be. And the reason for that, the reason I say that is because it's gonna really be based on your accessories and the speed of your bow as to how loud uh, and how much it vibrates. So these numbers are gonna be strictly based on how the bow comes from the manufacturer. I'm not gonna take anything off of it. I'm not gonna add anything to it. Um, but that's why I split those two numbers and drop the grading scale down to a five scale. So it's gonna be from a zero to a five. Uh, so that's six and seven. Number eight is gonna be speed. And that's also gonna be a 10 point scale. On this chart here, I do have to edit a little bit um, based on the chart that I've got, um, but I'm gonna have it split up in 27 inch and 30 inch and speeds below that. And then a grading point scale beside of it. What I wanna do here is I'm setting up a parameter where does this bow shoot faster than this or slower than this? And that's where you're gonna get your points. I'm not just gonna be like, I think this bow is an eight on speed. So I'm gonna take the numbers that I get when I shoot my three different arrows at two different draw lengths, 27 and 30. And then based on those numbers, we'll give you a score. So it may be a half number. You may, we may in be in between numbers. Um, several of these bows that I've graded so far have been half numbers, um, but I think that's going to give you a more like hard number. Like you can look at that chart and see why I gave it a certain score. Once again, like I always say, these numbers that I'm talking about that I get on these chronographs are not necessarily the exact number. They're not maybe, maybe not even the correct number but I'm scoring all these bows off of the same chronograph so that that way, when you look back at my videos, you can say, hey, this bow shot faster, this bow shot slower. But I'm hoping this chart gives you more of a hard, hard number there where you can look at it and see why I gave it a certain score. Number nine is gonna be weight, total weight of the bow. I'm just gonna go off of the manufactured weights I think I'll just get, I think I'll use a scale and maybe tell you the weights, but I'm just gonna go off the manufacturer weights. They've all been very, very close to what they say. That's why I'm just going off of those weights. So far, I haven't ran into any of them that are drastically different one way or the other, lighter or heavier. Once again, I'll have a scale here. Um, 
and I'm gonna have it split down in 30 inch bow or 30 inch axle to axle or less, 31 inch axle to axle, 32 inch axle to axle, and then 33 inch axle to axle or more. The reason why I have it split up that that's to me, that's the four sizes of bow that are pretty common throughout the brands. The way I have it set up, uh, each length axle to axle is going to have a um, set of weights below it. And wherever that bow falls in that set of weights will give you what your points are. That way it's not up to me. I'm not saying, hey, you know, I think this bow is a six on weight. This will give you the number. This is the numbers I've looked and looked and looked and I tried to come up with a number that was fair and something that was an, was an attainable number by these companies. Uh, to give a 10 and then I went from there and two tenths of a pound on, and worked my way down from there to zero. So what I did is I feel like a 3.8 pound bow is a feasible bow in a 30 inch bow or less. And then all the way up to a 33 inch bow or more, I'm at 4.1 pounds. I feel like that's an attainable number. Uh, so far, most of these bows, actually all the bow, bows I've tested, None of them were a 10, but the new Matthews, both of those were very close and I gave them a nine based on these weights. Uh, some of the other bows did very well, uh, but those two are the ones that stand out to me the most. But what you can do here is you can just look through this and say, okay, uh, the bow that I'm looking at is a four and a half pound bow. That's pretty middle of the road right now with what you can get in an aluminum bow. Um, so that's going to be a 10 point grading scale as well. Number 10 is going to be balance. Balance is crucial, but not so crucial. The way the bow balances bare bow is not as crucial as the way that the bow has an option to balance, if that makes sense. Um, you pick a bow up out of the box. Yeah, it might not balance that great, but what are the options that you have to make that bow balance? Now, the way I'm scoring this is going to be a five-point score, five-point grading criteria because, like I said, I don't think it's as important as a lot of people make it out to be. Um, but with that being said, what I'm measuring, the, what I'm, so when I'm saying balance, it's just how it feels in my hand. It's opinionated. When I pull that bow out of the box, how does that bow feel? That's where I'm going to get that number from. 11. This is another five-point grading criteria, and this is going to be integrated accessories. Does it op do you have an option for an integrated sight? Do you have an option for an integrated wrist? Integrated stabilizer? Sp a specific quiver to that brand? That's, that's, the reason I say that is because these bo most of these brands have a quiver specific to them that's optimized for that bow. Does it have that option? And does it have a bow stand um, that you can shoot with, with, with it on the bow without throwing off your balance or your shot on the bow. So that's the five things inside of the integrated accessories. And it's just gonna be a one point for each thing. Does it have it, does it not? If it doesn't have it, it's a zero. And then at the end of that, you'll have up to five points. And then price. Price is gonna be the final grading criteria and it's gonna be a 10 point scale. It's still gonna be the same grading criteria as I had before. $600 or less is gonna give you a 10 all the way up to $1,800 or over $1,800 is gonna be a zero. And then at the bottom, I'll have a total where you can put your total score. I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about this grading criteria. I really think it, it gives you some things that are hard numbers and not, not as much opinion, while it still has some opinion in it. So I hope you like this grading criteria. I'm, like I said, I'm hoping to get this thing finalized and I'm hoping to have an option to to link this where you can go to it and print it off yourself. So like I always say, guys, if you have any archery related questions and I can't answer them, don't hesitate to give these guys a call at 704-855-1300. They'll help you with anything archery related that they can. Please comment down below. Please like and subscribe, guys. This, this channel means a lot to me and I hope that you get something out of it. So if you enjoy watching the channel, please like and subscribe. Please check out our website for hats and t-shirts. And uh, like I always say, guys, remember to live your life to the fullest and use your passions to bless others. We'll catch you on the next video.